Chapter 5 of Christmas Holidays at Maryvale. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Christmas Holidays at Maryvale by Alice Hale Burnett. Chapter 5 The Adventure in the Snow. I'm glad we brought the sleigh, Father Brown remarked as they were driving along at a fair pace a little later, as we never could have gotten through with a wagon in this deep snow. They were now starting up the hill, and the horse's feet sank deeply into the snowdrifts although his load was not heavy, as the boys took turns walking, so that only two of them were riding at a time. "'When we reach the first clearing,' father proposed, "'we'll cut the greens and then leave them in a pile by the roadside, for it is likely we shall have to go up still higher before we can find the tree we want.' After going on a few yards more he shouted, "'Here's the place! All hands to work!' And the boys started in with a will, bringing to the roadside great heaps of boughs and wood-vines, some of them covered with red berries, and others with grey. Within a short time they had gathered a large pile of the greens, so they decided it was time to start out to find the tree. "'The tree must be full and the top perfect,' declared Father Brown, "'so keep your eyes open for it.' "'What's the matter with that one?' demanded Toad, pointing to a big fir some distance away. "'Nothing at all the matter with it,' laughed Chuck. "'Only the house is too small to hold it.' "'There's a nice one,' called out Herbie, pointing to the one he meant. "'Yes, that's a beauty,' agreed Father Brown, "'and easy to get at, too.' After clearing away the smaller branches near the ground, by chopping them off with the axe, Father Brown then started to work on the trunk of the tree. "'Wouldn't it be nice,' suggested Fat, "'if we didn't have to cut it down at all, just trim it outside?' "'It would save so much time and trouble.' "'Oh, yes, that would be great,' agreed Reddy. "'We'd just sit around on the snow eating ice-cream and look at the tree.' And he gave a hearty laugh, in which all the others joined. "'Well, I'll bet they do it in Greenland and Iceland,' persisted Fat. "'So why couldn't we?' "'Because we don't wear white polar-bear clothes,' laughed Chuck. "'There she comes! She's falling!' cried the boys." "'Stay where you are until it's down,' called Father Brown to the boys. There was a sharp creak and a swish of branches as the tree came down, and the boys now rushed over to help tie up the branches. When that part of the work was finished, Reddy sang out, "'All together! Lift her up on the sleigh! One, two, three! And up it went. "'Nobody gets a ride home,' called out Chuck, "'because the greens have to go on top of the tree.' "'Oh!' wailed Fat. "'If I can't ride, I'll roll down. I hate to walk.' By the time they had reached the fields, the worst part of the trip was over. "'We'll cut over to the road that runs past the church,' said Father Brown, "'and leave some of the greens there,' at which the horse was headed in that direction. As they came to the road they saw a short distance from them an object in the snow, and as they drew nearer it proved to be a little fellow, deep in a snowdrift, his hands were blue with the cold, and as Father Brown picked him up in his arms he tried to speak but couldn't. "'I know who he is,' volunteered Herbie. "'He's Patsy O'Reilly, and he lives over there,' pointing to a small house up the road. "'His brother Mike goes to school with me,' he continued. "'I'll carry him home,' said Father, "'as you boys are able to handle things all right now.' Saying which, he started off to the little house with Patsy in his arms. "'Chuck,' to whom Father Brown had handed the reins, now started to drive the horse toward home. When the boys arrived at the church and had carried in the greens, the ladies were delighted, and one of them even tried to kiss Reddy, but he hurried away, just in time. End of chapter 5